Good morning, Grade Twelves. We're continuing with the study of settlements. Um, just a recap on what we had a look at yesterday: the difference between rural and urban settlements. Um, I suppose the biggest difference would be population uh, size, but then also we say that a rural um, settlement is unifunctional, so they most of the population are involved in primary activities, and whereas in an urban settlement we are talking about a multifunctional settlement. So that's secondary, tertiary, and quaternary activities. The complexity of a settlement is another difference. And um, here we look at, um, for example, things like medical facilities. Small rural environments, maybe you're just going to have a mobile clinic or something like that once a month. Um, whereas in an urban area, you could have any choice of um, doctors, GPs, uh, through to specialists, as well as um, different facilities, hospitals, um, and so on. Education is another example. In a little rural town, um, maybe there'd only be a primary school, uh, a couple of different grades in one class, and so on. But an urban centre would have a huge choice of all different kinds of schools, all the way primary, secondary, um, up to tertiary institutions, universities, technicons, etc. Um, another complexity that we can have a look at um, is that in the small rural communities, um, most probably everyone would speak at least one of the same language. Religion, political beliefs, that sort of thing would all be more or less the same. Um, whereas the diversity in a huge urban area is, is massive. I mean, languages, cultures, um, religions, belief systems. You know, if you just if you just look at the complexity of that, that um, tells you the difference. So um, another thing that we have to look at with settlement is whether it's a wet or a dry point settlement. So these are two definitions that we need um, to know, and this is um, often a question that will come up in map work. So if you look at this, a wet point settlement is one that's located near water. So it would be like a, um, um, a dry sort of area where there's a river that is flowing through, then the settlement would be close to the river, or an oasis in the desert, as you've got here. A dry point settlement is an area that is chosen um, to be away from, from the water, or sort of um, away from potential flooding. So here you've got it in a nutshell. A wet point is a wet place in a dry area, and a dry point is a dry place in a wet area. Um, just this dry point settlement, there's normally a high-lying area. Um, this next uh, slide here, um, giving credit here to Solutions for All from Macmillan, the diagram I've taken um, from that textbook, as well as, as well as this text here. Um, so here we're looking at the actual pattern that a settlement takes, and we've either got it as a nucleated pattern or we've got it as a dispersed pattern. So let's just have a look at this nucleated, we also often called clustered, and dispersed we often also refer to as isolated. So here we've got nucleated is a dense clustering of the buildings, um, it can be as... Um, uh, we see in this in this diagram up here, we can see all of these buildings are together, they're um, along the river. Um, rural um, dwellers are, all have access to the same water then. Um, here you could have potentially just have one owner of the land, or otherwise it's community um, owned. And uh, some of the disadvantages of this sort of nucleated settlement is that um, people often live far away or further away from where they work and they don't have um, their own decision making, especially if it's communal land, then um, everyone has to agree on, on the um, farming methods, you know, what, whatever it is. But of course, we are um, by nature social creatures, so there's safety in numbers. Um, we uh, feel the need to socialize. I think this is something we see a lot now with our social distancing that we're doing now. 
All right, so dispersed settlements, uh, the buildings are far away from each other and they're normally surrounded by the um, fields or the cultivated lands that they're working on. So normally then those lands are owned by the person that's living on them. They live and work in the, in the same place. Um, they've got all the resources are available to, to them there. Um, and the types of activities we're looking at there is um, large areas of, of land that are being farmed and it's often um, livestock um, that are farmed in those large areas. Again here, um, dispersed is what we say isolated, nucleated is clustered. I think that's it. Those are our differences in the settlements.